what do you do when you feel frustrated or when you feel stuck? What do you do when it feels like your only options are bad options? Well, that is the situation that God's people found themselves in in today's epic Bible story. We are in a series of messages called Epic Bible Stories, and, and specifically kind of focusing on the Old Testament Bible stories, where God just showed up in a super powerful, amazing way. And so today I want to just pick up the story where Pastor CJ left off last Sunday with the Exodus. So would you, if you have a Bible, would you turn to Exodus chapter 12, uh, starting in verse 2, and we'll get there in just a moment, Exodus 12. So to just give you the context, many centuries ago, God's people, Israel, had settled in another country, in Egypt. And they, they through a, a, just a long course of events, they began to be uh, enslaved by the Egyptians. And it didn't start out that way. They, they came at a wonderful invitation. They came and they were prospering. Everything was cool. But then as generations went on, the Egyptians got jealous and afraid, and they, they imposed slavery on the Israelites, on God's people. And, and so God's people, they were, they were treated so badly. God's people began to cry out to God, God, help us, deliver us, rescue us. And so God raised up a leader, Moses, to go and confront the Egyptian pharaoh, the, the king of Egypt at that time. And he, he, Moses brought this message to pharaoh. God says, let my people go. And it, through just a bunch of very powerful uh, situations, the Pharaoh refused. And he said, I'm not letting your people go. And sometimes he would say he was going to then, and then change his mind. I'm not letting your people go. So God began one by one to send plagues. And we talked about the first couple plagues last Sunday together. Uh, I'll never forget, my, my image of the plague of frogs will be forever changed with that image of Pastor CJ with a lime green frog around his neck uh, last week. That was awesome. If you didn't see that message, you got to go back and see it. But God sent these plagues of blood and then frogs and then gnats, flies, death to all the livestock. Just one at a time, Pharaoh would say no, and God would say, send a plague. Then God sent skin sores, sores on people's skin throughout the land, hail and, and fire mixed with that. Locusts came in and just ate every green thing. And then finally, darkness. And God sent all these plagues one at a time, and still Pharaoh refused to let God's people go. But God had decided already he was about to bring about a cataclysmic world shift. Kind of interesting when you think of where we're at right now in our world, because for them, everything was changing. After 430 years in Egypt, the Israelis were going to go back to their promised land, the land that God had promised to their ancestors. After centuries of slavery, they were, they were going to walk free. I mean, that's, that's a world shift. This, this is a group of people who's been enslaved for 430 years with no control over their lives, and now God was saying, get up, it's time to go. And so in Exodus chapter 12, verse 2, I, I want to read this to you. And as I was preparing, I, I read the first like 15 chapters, 13, 14 chapters of Exodus, just all in one sitting, just to get the context this week. And when I got to this verse, I just started crying. I just had to just step away from it because listen to what God says to his people. From now on, this month will be the first month of the year for you. Okay, just think. Can you imagine if God said, came to us today and said, okay, today's January. We're starting everything over. That's what he did. God said, you know the calendar you've been using for a few thousand years? Gone. From now on, it all starts over. And from now on, this month will be the first month of the year for you, my people. Wow, it all starts over for you now. This is a month to remember. And that's where we're at at NFC. This will be a month 
to remember for us. Pastor CJ and Nicole get to go and pursue their dream to plant a church in another city in Bellevue. The name of the church is Wonder Church, and it's going to be a place where God's awe and wonder are seen. What a great, exciting, beautiful, thrilling, scary, wonderful time it is for the Whitcos as they go to pursue that dream. And they are passing the torch to our new staff here that we've just welcomed. And, and God has been so gracious to us to allow some overlap of that. We had a pretty, a pretty powerful, crazy week in some ways uh, this past week. And I, I was so glad that uh, Pastor CJ was here to be able to see what is going on. And um, there, there was a, a time, uh, one of the evenings this past week, where Shelly and I were sitting on the couch at home, and I just said, I, I feel like in some ways today, CJ was Moses. And he was getting to see into the promised land as he's seen our new staff, and he's seen us pray together and be together, and he got to see that. And I told Shelly, I'm so glad CJ got to see that we're going to be okay, that God is with us. And that meant so much to me, uh, that, he, that he was here. Uh, our new staff, uh, I'm telling you what, we are so excited about them. We've, uh, uh, the, the first one, Pastor Christian, came a couple weeks ago, and then Tori came uh, here maybe a week or so ago. I don't know the timing, something like that. And so we, we've just had one week to all to be together. And already, Shelly and I are just so impressed at what our new team members bring. They bring excellence and organization and follow through and, and just, just so many things, but they bring a passion and a vision for ministry. That's the thing that is just so exciting, and we're so glad to have you here. We, we, are, we are going good places. This last Sunday night was our NFC youth relaunch. You know, we've been all separated during the, the pandemic, and it's just been all crazy and weird. And uh, Pastor Christian, as our, our new youth pastor, came, and he and Sarah, uh, they, they started rearranging the youth room and, and, and just did a, uh, had a great time. There were 14 people, and that, in, that included uh, a couple parents and some guests. But uh, we had gone uh, from just being all separated to being together, and that was a huge number and super exciting. And it's great to applaud. Yes. And I hope you're applauding at home, too. And then this, this past week, uh, Pastor Christian got in there and totally changed the youth room. It looks so cool. It is a stunning, beautiful place to go. And so I know the students that come tonight are going to love it. You should see it. It is so cool. Uh, I want to show you a picture from this week, uh, this, this past week, uh, of our staff in this room praying together. And this was on This was on Monday. And it was our, our first time to have the whole team together on a work day. And we, we took the, the first part of, of our time together, and we just went or, uh, moved around this room, and we just prayed. We prayed over where we are. We prayed over the, the broadcast. We, we prayed over our in, in-house gathering. We prayed over youth ministry and kids ministry and outreach and just every, everywhere we're going. And together, we were, we were walking around the room and praying for the people who would be sitting in these spots. And we went around the camera and prayed for the people who would be watching online. I mean, we just we bathed it in prayer. It was such a powerful cool, beautiful time together. We are so encouraged about where we're going. It, it, it is it, it's just so exciting. We also are moving ahead on our promised land. Uh, we uh, we are, are preparing to move, you know, change locations uh, for our, our in-house gatherings. Fortunately, online, we'll still be in the same place. So that, that's kind of cool. You'll always be able to find us. Uh, but we, we are working very hard, very diligently behind the scenes uh, on, the new, on, on the new place. And, uh, you know, all the, big, all the big rocks are in place, all the big contracts and all that stuff. But there's still some negotiating we're doing on aspects of, move, of the purchase and the sale. So uh, I, I would ask you to just keep praying. I mean, it's really exciting. And in fact, there's more than I can talk about right now. So we're going to put it in a newsletter, an email, and, and send it out to you this week. All right, so we'll give you a little bit more details because there's, there's good stuff coming. Amen. This is a month to remember Amen. For, our, for our congregation. Back to our story, though. 
later on, after, after uh, all those plagues and everything, God revealed what he was up to. And I'm going to uh, skip ahead in Exodus chapter 29, verse 46. God was speaking, and uh, this is what he said. And uh, he was ta talking about the story of the Exodus and everything. He said, and they will know that I am the Lord their God. I am the one God is speaking. I am the one who brought them out of the land of Egypt. Listen to why. I am the one who brought them out of the land of Egypt so that, somebody say, so that, I could live among them. You know, we get so focused on, God, my slavery is bad, or God, my situation is bad. Uh, uh, here's my prayer request. God, help me, help me, help me, help me. And God had something bigger, grander, better, and more special than simply being freed from slavery. What was in God's mind is, I want to be with them. I want to live among them. I want my people to know me, to know their God, and that I am the only God, and that I am for them, and I am powerful, and I am loving. That's what God had in mind. That is awesome. So uh, I, I would summarize this whole message with this phrase. God's goal in your life is his presence. God's goal in your life is his presence. He, there's a lot of stuff, you know, that he wants to accomplish on the earth and, and in our lives. But really, from the very beginning, from the Garden of Eden we talked about a few weeks ago, God's goal in your life is his presence. He wants to be with you. He wants you to be with him. So now, I, I've talked about the first nine plagues, but the final plague was the worst. And it was the death of all of Egypt's firstborn sons, firstborn male animals, and firstborn male humans throughout the land of Egypt. Now, God warns people. He, God, is not, God does not love judgment. He doesn't love um, punishment. He doesn't love plagues. And God warned them time after time. And God warned Pharaoh, the worst is coming. I'm telling you, let my people go into the desert to worship me. And Pharaoh ignored God's warnings. God also warned his people, the Israelis. And he told them that uh, this plague is coming. But God said, if you will sacrifice a spotless lamb, a one-year-old lamb with no defects, take its blood. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. Take its blood and apply it to the doorposts of your home. Every home, uh, every Israeli home that does that implies the blood of the lamb to their doorposts. God said, that death will not touch you. It will not touch your home. Pharaoh did not listen, but the Israelis did. And at midnight, death struck Egypt, and God's people left in a hurry. Exodus 13, ver uh, chapter 13, verse 21. This is what happened when they left. And I'm skipping some details for time, but the Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud. Can you imagine seeing God's presence in a cloud? And then he provided a light at night with a pillar of fire. And this allowed them to travel by day or night. And when God is leading you, he, he can lead you through darkness or in spite of it pretty amazing. I'm going to skip down to verse, or skip over to verse 17, same chapter, in the middle of the verse. God did not lead them along the main road that runs through Philistine territory. It was a warring nation, even though that was the shortest route to the promised land. God said, if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led them in a roundabout way through the wilderness toward the Red Sea. Now, here's a lesson for us. God guides you on the best path, not the shortcut. We all are praying for the shortcut, but God guides you on the best path, not the shortcut. So the shortcut, they could have probably got to the promised land in a couple days, you know, with marching with this huge nation of people, Israel's, uh, Israel, Israelis. But God said, God was so thoughtful and so caring. He said, no, I'm not going to do that because I don't want them to get discouraged right away 
by hitting a battle. And so God said, no, you better come back this way. And he, and he took him toward the Red Sea. God's goal in your life is his presence. That's his goal. Sometimes that comes through the roundabout way. So the Israelis camped on the shore of the Red Sea. And, and I've got to say, I don't know if you noticed Pastor Brandon's shirt earlier. Uh, Pastor Brandon, maybe come up and just show him more time. He is wearing his Red Sea shirt. <laughs> and it is red, and there are waves on it. And it's parted. And it's parted. Oh my goodness, that is amazing, and uh, I, might, I might need your help here. I've got quite a thing going on. Um, let's just, I think we could slip that off maybe, we go like that, or I have scissors also. Uh, I know. Yeah, you don't want to touch it because it will leave a mark. And would you like this? We can take that off too, and can I give you that? Absolutely. Thank you so much. What I have here is the Red Sea, because the Red Sea was blue, yeah. despite what's happening with Pastor Brandon's shirt. <laughs> the Red Sea was blue, and there were fishes in it and stuff like that, and God led the, uh, the Israelis to the shore of the Red Sea. And who wouldn't want to go camping on the seashore, right? Doesn't that sound so fun? <laughs> I'm saying that because it didn't turn out to be so fun because the Egyptians got mad that the Israelis all left, and so their army came out, led by the 600 best chariot drivers in Israel, or in Egypt, rather, including the Pharaoh himself. The king of Egypt comes after them. The, the army all comes after, chasing after the Israelis. So then the Israelis had the, the Red Sea in front of them, and they had Pharaoh's army behind them. They were trapped between the soldiers and the sea. Literally between the devil and the deep blue sea, I think, in, in this case. And all of a sudden, there was panic at the disco. The, they're like freaking out. Oh no, this is terrible. We got the sea. We can't go forward. We got the army behind us and we, we can't go back and we're not good fighters. And what do we do? This is terrible. And the Bible literally says they panicked. And in Exodus chapter 14, next chapter, verse 11, they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Okay, correction, God brought them out there to live in the wilderness. <laughs> but they couldn't see it right then because they were, you know, they were between a rock and a hard place. They were, they were, they were sandwiched in. Verse 13, uh, Exodus 14, 13, but Moses told the people, listen to this, and receive this to yourself today. Don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Wow. If that's not a word for today, I, I don't know what is. That, is. that is so awesome. So what happened then is God had been leading them by this pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. So that pillar, God moves his, his uh, tangible sign of his presence to the back of Israel. Okay, so he was leading them forward. So he, he, God, God's presence was there between Israel and the sea. God uh, comes around the back. I don't know why he was like around a corner, like, uh, I don't know. But he came, he came and he moved that sign of his presence between Israel and Egypt. And no one touched each other while that pillar was there. And God was protecting them. Walking with God means you're never alone. Amen. Walking with God means you're never alone. You may not be able to see a pillar of cloud or fire, but you are never alone when you're walking with God. And that's a good lesson for us. When, when there's nothing more you can do, just stand still and watch what God can do. And I know some of you are at that place. There, there's nothing more you can do about that situation. There, I mean, you've done what you know to do. You, there's nothing else you can do. You're at that place. Here, let's learn from these guys. Stand still and watch what God can do. And I have seen God move mountains literally in my life. And I believe that he can do it for you too. God's goal in your life is his presence. Amen? Then God said to Moses, Stop crying, get moving. 
And there's a lesson in there for some of us as well. Get moving. There is a time to cry. There is a time to grieve and mourn. There is, and we should do it. We need to do it. But we also can get back up again with God's power and his love and his presence, and we can move on in his name. Amen? Amen. We can, and you can move on. So God said to Moses, raise your staff again. Remember last week's message was raise your staff. God said, raise your staff again over the sea. And in Exodus chapter 14, verse 21, then Moses raised his hand over the sea, and the Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all that night, turning the seabed into dry land. So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. So God blew, and the sea began to part. And 600,000 men, plus their wives and children and grandparents, and some people who were not even Israelis, but were sympathetic and came along with them. And where there was no way, God opened up a way. And it was not jello walls they were walking through. It was sea walls. And what had been the sea was now dry ground. And uh, you know how it is, even when the, when the tide goes out, the sand's all mushy, and there's all kinds of gross stuff in it. Well, the Bible says these guys walk through on dry ground. So uh, the estimates... Uh, somewhere over a, over a million people. We, we don't know exactly. The estimate, minimum estimate would be like uh, uh, 1.2 million plus kids. So maybe like around 2 million people, Israelis, walk through the sea. And the, the Egyptian armies back there are like, what? What is going on? And as they looked into, the Bible says that the water stood up like walls. And they looked into those walls, they saw fish. So I want to ask Tori and Joseph to come and pass out some fish. Now, uh, we wanted to, because, you know, it's a, a Jewish story, an Israeli story, we, we got some Yiddish fish for you. Oh, oh, wait a minute. What, we, we couldn't get the Yiddish fish? Okay, we got Swedish fish instead. <laughs> Not quite as biblical, but very tasty. Yeah, very, very, very tasty. The Egyptian army of chariots pursued them. They all God's people got through. The Egyptian army said, well, we better go after them. I guess the walls of water have stood this long. It's going to be fine. So they, they go into that, that dry ground but in, between the sea walls. But God started messing up their chariot wheels. And they weren't driving right. And they, they couldn't escape. Moses raised his staff again once all the Israelis got through. And the Red Sea rushed back to fill in the gap covering the Egyptian army. And you guys, this is a very significant event. This, this night, the exodus and then the going through the Red Sea. Like this w month will be the first month of the rest of your life for, for, the, uh, for the Israelis. And Israel, for the first time in 430 years, was free. Like I, I, I don't know if I can, I, I would expect you all to be just like falling on the floor because it's so shocking and so to, to think what it would be like if you had been enslaved, and not just enslaved, but beaten down all of your life. You never knew anything else, and all of a sudden you were free, and your captors were swept away in the sea. I mean, can you imagine how, how epic, how life-changing, how cataclysmic this would be for those people? And so what they did, they burst out into song. And often God's people burst out into song when we want to praise Him and worship Him. In Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 to 2, we see the beginning of the song. It's a, it's a whole uh, chapter long song, super long song with crazy lyrics. And back in my day, I can remember when we had a little tune <laughs> for this song as well. <laughs> it was very perky. Uh, and this is what it says. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Uh, you're nodding your head. I know some other people know this, this tune. Uh, he has hurled both horse and rider into the sea. This is their song. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. I will exalt him. <laughs> that was the end of our perky little song. Uh, God's goal in your life is his presence. That's his goal. Now today, if this happened, 
uh, and, we, and we got to go through something like this, we would bust out into a song, but it would look a little different. It would sound more like this. Why don't you sing along with Stephen? You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. Come on, sing it with me. You rescued me so I can stand and sing. I am a child of God. Come on, let's sing it again. You split the seas, yeah. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love, yeah. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. Come on, I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Come on, I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the word salvation in the Bible that's translated salvation is a word that means uh, forgiveness, healing, and rescue. And just like those people were calling out to God, deliver us, that's that word. That is that word. It's the save us, deliver us, rescue us, heal us. And God answered, and he said yes. And you know what is so cool? And one of the reasons I really want to make sure we talked about this epic Bible story is that Jesus is your ultimate Passover lamb. Jesus. He is the one who was the perfect spotless lamb. He is the one whose blood was spilt on the wood posts of the cross. And when we put our faith in Jesus, our Passover lamb, death passes over us. And we have eternal life. Oh yes, this body may die, but it will be raised in an undiable body, incorruptible, the Bible says. Wow, Jesus is your Passover lamb. Death no longer has the final say over you. Jesus is your path through the Red Sea. He is your path to freedom. Jesus said about himself in John chapter 8, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave of sin. So if the Son sets you free, you are truly free. And you and I were born into sin. So just like the Israelis, all of our lives, for as long as we could remember, we started out in slavery to sin, just like them. And just as it's so big for them that for the first time ever they were finally free, it's that big that for the first time when you put your faith in Jesus long ago or today, you are finally free. It's that big. Wow. Jesus is your path through the Red, the Red Sea. He is your path of freedom. God's goal in your life is his presence. So right here in the room or watching online, would you pray with me? Would you bow your heads now? And let, let's pray. And, and let's just give it all to God. Let, let's start by just thanking God. Lord, I just thank you that you are our Passover lamb, Jesus. I thank you that you are our path to freedom. I praise you, Lord God. I praise you. We praise you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that you are more than enough for us. Just staying in this atmosphere of prayer, I want to ask you, are you frustrated with the situation you're facing? Does your life feel out of control? Does it seem like all of your options are bad options? Do you feel like you're stuck between the soldiers and the seashore? Between something hard and something else harder? Do you feel like you've come up against something you cannot change? You, you, you can't move that ocean. You can't just move that army like it's beyond you. 
if you're in a situation where you're stuck, you're, you're facing a hard thing, could you just raise your hand right in the room and online? There's just something powerful about doing something physical as sort of a lead-in to something spiritual. Some of you are facing a, a diagnosis where there's, we, that's it. There's nothing else we can do. Some of you are, are facing a challenge with your kids. That's, there's nothing else we can do. It's just, that's it. And we're raising our hand. And I just want to pray for you this morning. Lord, I, I, I just pray for every person whose hand is up right now, uh, online or in the room. And, and even for those who might be watching this broadcast a little bit later, I just pray for that person. Lord, right now, for the person that's stuck, for the person who's facing something immovable, I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would come and that you would just make your presence known to that person, to each of us in this room, each, each person praying with us online. Lord, there's so many things I could pray. I could say, Lord, take away the sea, take away the army, defeat the army, Lord, bring the provision, make the change, Lord. But first and foremost, I'm just praying for you. Lord, I pray that your goal for our lives would be realized and that we would have your presence. Lord, I pray that we would not give up this morning, that we would not give up, but that we would trust in you, that we'd fall back into your presence, and that we'd make it through this, whatever it is we're facing, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. You can put your hands down, but I want to stay in this atmosphere of prayer. And um, if, you, if you have been a part of NFC for some time, you know what I'm about to do. And you could be tempted to, to tune out or maybe even leave the broadcast or just tune out right now. But there's a couple reasons why I want you to hear this every single week, okay? You know what I'm about to do. One, one reason. If you already know Jesus, would you start praying? Instead of, like, you, you know, the temptation could be, oh, yeah, I've heard this before. Instead of doing that, would you to lean in and start praying right now Amen. that people will put their faith in Jesus Christ? everywhere across the country or even around the world where this is being viewed right now. So we're leaning in. Another thing is, so when you're in the coffee shop, when you're at work, when you're in the neighborhood, you've heard me show you how to lead someone to Jesus. You've heard it so many times, you don't know you've memorized it, but you have. And that's a good thing. Now, for you that are in this room, for you that are watching, you don't know what I'm about to say. This is new to you. I want to invite you to know Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to invite you to meet this Passover lamb, Amen. to meet this pathway through the sea. I want to invite you to meet this rescuer, this deliverer, this savior, Jesus. He is the only one in his category. He loves you. He died to save you. And I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus this morning. That's very important. And I invite you to trust him. Faith is belief, confidence, and a willingness to obey. I, I want to invite you to become an apprentice of Jesus. Not just someone who thinks Jesus is nice, because many people do, but someone who becomes an apprentice of Jesus. You actually begin to follow him, study him, talk to him, learn from him, and, and live like him and speak like him. And, and spread his love to others. That's what I want to invite you to today. It's a very high bar. And it's the most exciting decision you could ever make to put your faith in Jesus and become his apprentice. Would you like to do that today? If you're in this room, I want to ask you, if you want to become an apprentice of Jesus today, put your faith in him, then I, I, I'm gonna, in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. How do you do it? You turn away from your sin, turn your life over to God, and let him lead. If you want to do that today, would you raise your hand? I already see hands going up, and that is so cool, so exciting. I love it. Are there others that would say, yes, today's my day? Yes. Oh, that is so great. And I believe there's some people watching online right now that you're, you're going to make the same decision. So I'd love to just coach you in a prayer, all right? Just help you know how, how to pray in this kind of thing. Believers are praying and listening and learning. All right? And, and others of you, if you're putting your faith in Jesus today, would you just say after me this prayer? Don't say it to me. Pray it to Jesus. All right? Here we go. Here we go. Jesus. You say Jesus? Yeah. Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please forgive me 
of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice starting now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer today, the answer was yes. Woo! Yes. Today, some of you started walking through the Red Sea of difficulty in your life today, just now. And if you just made that decision, whether you're in the room or watching online, the response is the same way. Would you head to the website and just click on that I'm new, that, that connect card. And at the bottom of the connect card, there's a little secret box. And it says, I made a decision today to follow Jesus. Would you click that box so I know? I'm the one who knows. I, I, I'm the one who will receive that information. Click that box, and I'll just send you a quick email to encourage you and give you some next steps, all right? God bless you, everybody. I am so encouraged by the lengths that God will go to so that we have an opportunity to be in his presence. This was parting of the sea, but he sent his son. I mean, this is, this is his story. He loves us so much, he will do everything, everything for us to be in his presence. I love that about our God. What an amazing day it has been. What a great time of worship and praising God together. We are so glad uh, that you came and in, in hung out with us. This has been a great day. Right now on YouTube, if you're already watching there, there's kids videos. You can head right over there, click on those kids videos and watch them if you're in the room. Get home, watch those kids videos. They're awesome. Dance with your kids. Get up, look silly, have fun, learn a great Bible story. It will be awesome. We will see you here or online next week, same time. Have a great day. Be blessed.